Hello again, everyone. Zach Attack is here, my WWE World Review for this Fourth of July edition of it. My arm is still in a sling, as you can tell, because of my accident I suffered. It's been almost over a week. It has been over a week. But it all's feeling good. Clavicle's feeling good. So I'm not going to have to get this sling off. So with this being the Fourth of July wall, everyone's having a happy and safe. 4th of July thus far, as this video will be uploaded. If you haven't heard, there's fireworks going on in my neighborhood, so if you hear any fireworks blast off, don't mind it. So this being the Independence Day, whatever you call it, like people call it Independence Day, some people call it 4th of July, edition of Monday Night Wall goes, especially heading towards Battleground and the course of draft as well. It was a good episode. A little better than last week, because with last week being the first war without Reigns, we all kind of went pedestrian. But he had some good action, because like, a couple matches that were decent, and of course some matches being set up for Battleground tonight, and some announced for it. So there you go. We shall begin war with a little 4th of July barbecue party they had, because usually when WWE has a holiday edition of either a war or SmackDown, they always like to have some sort of get together and always end up in a food fight. Especially when SmackDown used to be on Thursdays and Thanksgiving came around. Notorious for that, especially when that time. But today had all the superstars in there. The raw villains had to crash the party and started singing. And about the all truth and gold dust, the golden truth. And then someone pied the fall villains, even Miz got involved and mentioned the SmackDown Thanksgiving traditions. And the food fight really erupted. The funniest part in all this was Kevin Owens in this. <laughs> it's Sam sight. Owens' is acting in this was actually. He, he saw the food fight. A lot of people went on. Like, people didn't pay attention to it. But Owens ran out of the table and hit from it and ate laser the whole time. <laughs> then he came out after the whole thing and got patted and then threw a tantrum. They thought Owens is a fucking badass. Even when he's being embarrassed, he still acts like a fucking badass dude. I think Owens is one of my favorite guys. It has been ever since he debuted in NXT. I know I didn't watch it when he was, of course, Kevin Steen in Ring of Honor. Because many of you know I'm a Ring of Honor guy too now. But yeah, I like him in NXT. Maybe I'll see some of his matches in Ring of Honor when he was Kevin Steen. So after that celebration video that aired, we had Lillian Garcia sing the anthem. And what a appropriate way to start war. On the 4th of July, they have the United States Championship on the line, defended by a foreigner. And a good one playing the heel so well that it was as good as it was when he was the champion the first time. Trying to be pushed like a badass again after getting demoted. Especially if losing the scene last year, of course, referring to the Bulgarian Brute. Rusev was not introduced by Lana tonight, but she was at ringside as he was defending against titles. So now this feud's been boiling ever since. Mostly after Money in the Bank. They had the match in Money in the Bank, but then they had the, the rematch two weeks ago. Sorry, I had a little scratching this. Added in a uh, no contest because Tyus looked more aggressive than he did at the Money in the Bank match. Last week they had a match, and then in a count out. And now, this is kind of the settlement. And I didn't see any of the dispute. He didn't look credible. But at the Money in the Bank, it, they made him look really credible, especially looking like a fierce. Balls after Money in the Bank, making him look like a badass, beating up Rusev at war. And those emotions got the best, trying to get the best of him again tonight. Wearing his USA garb, making him look like Apollo Creed back in Rocky form. Then he almost looked like that. Like, he wore like almost the same kind of outfit that Apollo Creed wore doing Rocky form. It was a probably I was watching bits of Rocky for today. Thank you, Nostalgia Critic. Anyway, um. But Neil trying to use all his momentum heading towards this, especially after beating Rusev via counter last week. And use the aggression in his advantage. And emotions got the best of him, though. Despite trying to keep him in check, Rusev came back with some big nasty kicks. Some big moves. Even after Titus hit his own move to clash with Titus, Rusev was still unstoppable. Leading up to a beatdown that led to the accolade. And Titus started to tap him. I haven't heard rumors that they were going to have a title change tonight. Now, if Titus win tonight and have him lose that battleground, I don't think that should have happened. 
You know, it would have been appropriate to have a title change tonight. You know, to have a USA guy win it. But you cannot derail Rusev's momentum. Even if it's for a one-off just to make good on a holiday and take advantage of it. And milk it. If an American win the U.S. championship on a 4th of July episode of Wall, that's milking it. But they didn't. They didn't want to ruin Rusev's momentum. And you still look like a badass. Like, they're trying the best in Titus. At least they're doing better with Titus than they're doing with Darren Young and those stupid commercials with him and Bob Beck. I've been commenting on those a lot. I've been trying to avoid commenting on those and the continuing videos of the Shining Stars to make up for the fact they have not been seen in the ring since their debut when they debuted the Crickets. So, there you go with that. At least they're trying to make Titus look credible. And this, like, early on they made him, they didn't do a good job of it. But the last couple weeks, they made him look more legit. But even with that, the victory went to Rusev. And he had a microphone like, happy birthday, my guy! Like, making fun of America on the microphone. So there you go. So on to our next matchup, a tag team affair involving Enzo and Cass against the Social Outcast. This, of course, stemmed from last week. When Enzo and Cass beat a couple jobbers. Got pajamas last week, and the social outcast came in and didn't want no piece of Enzo and Cass, but tonight they got a piece, or at least two of them did. Dressed up like U.S. soldiers from the Revolutionary War, powder wings and blue coats and all. I'm surprised no one came out as Paul Revere and said, The Jab Squad is coming! The Jab Squad's coming! Or in this case, Jab Squad 2.0. I mean, the social outcast. He said he had his shirt on his sling like I did because he kind of got choke slammed by Kenny doing the food fight at the beginning of the show. So he was out. So it was up to Bo and Axel defending out of the job squad. I mean, the social cast. But after they tried to isolate Enzo a little bit, Enzo got the hot tag to be cast. He got the big boot, the Empire elbow, and onto the rocket launcher, which of course they now call the Bada boom, shaka laka. Weird name for a finisher. And it went to the victory in this quick squasher for Enzo and Cass. Okay, watching this match, I'm like, man, ever since they got out of the attacking title picture, they got nothing for them creatively for Enzo and Cass because they're so over and they need something to do. Well, they gave them something to do as they would not be, this would not be the last we would see of Enzo and Cass. We would see him later on in the evening. We'll get to that in a moment. I was talking about legit. Talking about legit boss. Sasha Banks. As she interrupted a Charlotte promo. And I. Charlotte was a good. She had a good promo here. Okay, so I, I like this promo segment. Trying to build up the Sasha Charlotte here. This is a view that many people, including myself, especially for anyone who's not seen my videos. Probably everyone who's seen my videos the last couple of months, probably almost a year, I've been saying it. Sasha Shaw it needs to happen. One on one. The triple threat, I didn't mind that. I didn't mind Becky being in at me. But we want Sa Shaw at Sasha one on one in the main roster. We're finally going to get it. They should save it for SummerSlam and have some sort of tag match. So they can save a one on one encounter at SummerSlam. Kind of like what they're doing. We've seen it in the club. Which I'll get to in a moment as well. Which led to a uh, little confrontation between Dana and uh, Sasha being the crap out of Dana tossing her outside the wing, but then it got attacked from behind from Charlotte. And then Charlotte got put in the bank statement before being pulled out to safety by Dana Brooke. For all the mistakes and all the bad booking WWE's, WWE's done for the women's division ever since WrestleMania at the All That Good Grace, of course, Speaking of saying in my videos, I've been bitching about the fact that we finally got good women that wrestle the main roster, but they've been booking them like crap ever since Mania. At the other great effort to bring legitimacy back in the women's division, even dumping the Divas title, in dumping the Divas division name, hell, even Carmella's not saying hottest diva and the hottest diva in NXT, She's saying the hottest chicken NXT, because that term Divas not being used. Oh, we announced the cancel Total Divas now. Well, they all doing Total Bells. Anyway, 
all that bad booking will be made up if they do this right with Sasha and Charlotte. If they do what they did at Mania for Charlotte and Sasha at SummerSlam, it'll redeem WWE for all the shady and shitty booking that they gave the women ever since Mania. And this great promo is the start of it. Hopefully there's more good promos like this in highlight packages, especially from Charlotte and Sasha's days at NXT. I saw these two women wrestle at an NXT house show last year in Cleveland, and they were phenomenal. I've said it a lot of times in my videos about Charlotte and Sasha. I never get sick of them wrestling each other. They have great chemistry with each other, and if they finally get to show that in the main roster, and if finally show once and for all, this women's revolution is for real. To have the best two new women wrestle one-on-one -on, -one on a big pay-per-view like SummerSlam, like I said, it'll redeem all the bad shit that he's done for the women since SummerSlam. Sounding a broken record, let's move on. To our next affair, which is a rematch from SmackDown. Champion vs. Champion is Dean Ambrose, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, or the WWE Champion, the dumping the World Heavyweight, they're just calling it the WWE Championship again. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge on having two separate belts again. Having a belt for War and a belt for SmackDown. But we're bringing back the World Heavyweight Championship belt. We had a lot of speculation ever since that name change over last week. As the WWE Champion, Dean Ambrose, would take on Miz, the IC Champion, at least he ain't taking on Kane the wah, wah, last week. Anywho, these two, I think this back match was a little better. But this match was still pretty good, especially if we were in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Miz is formerly associated with Ohio, but he is born there, from Cleveland. And Dean's from Cincy. Interesting they're in Columbus. Neutral territory. But at least they're in the home state at least. Like the Battle of Ohio. Almost. So these are an okay little showing. Miz carrying some big moves that cause attacking Ambrose's knee. To decapitalize on it by putting him in the fickle form. But despite the bum knee attack by Miz. Ambrose will indeed come flying back with some big flying moves. Leading up to the Dirty Deeds and a 1, 2, 3, 15, a decent little matchup for the WWE Champion. As Ambrose was celebrating, here comes one of his opponents for the Triple Threat match that's still going to have a battleground, even though one's suspended, because referring to Stat Wands. Both these guys try to battle it out, but nope. Both avoided contact as well as prepare for a matchup. Against Dolph Ziggler with Dean Ambrose at ringside, interacting with the Smash Now stable. I think Dean Ambrose should be a great heel. But I like my baby face though, but I think heel's coming. But if they won't turn woman heel, why would they turn Ambrose heel? So we have Ambrose commentating for the Rollins Ziggler match. And this was a really good matchup between these two great guys. The storyline was set up as Ziggler wanted a challenge match against Rollins, especially one of the last times to be able to be together on the same show. Until the draft, because who knows where everyone's going to go after the draft's going to happen on July 19th. You know, because the brand splits back. You know. So this we had a great showing. Great action before Bellas. Fellas, I, I said Bellas. Fellas. As well as going to big moves, super kick. Both guys had some super kick attempts. Despite rallying from Ziggler, even at one point, starts out to zigzag and the famous sir. Wallace well, comes with big moves of his own, including, like I said, the off mentioned super kick, leading up to the pedigree. And one, two, three, victory for Zat Wallace. Momentum on his side, heading towards the triple threat. And he and Ambrose would have a verbal confrontation, leading up to a physical one. Pounding all over the announce table, leading up to Dean Ambrose's dirty deeds thing. Zat Wallace on the announce table as revenge. For the duty deed move, but not exactly that last week. Because Ambrose won revenge for Rollins, giving him the pedigree last week. So they're going on, like I said, the super threat with Reigns, even though he's suspended. But hey, if WWE can build matches with part timers who are not there all the time, they can build a match with a guy who's suspended. Because you had Brock Lesnar and Taker hyped up, even if they're not there all the time. That match still happened despite the fact they're not all the time. If they can do that, 
if they can build a match with two guys who aren't on all the time, they can, like I said, build a match with a guy who's suspended. Because, of course, as we know, the suspension that Roman Reigns is under will be lifted on July 21st, two days before Battleground. So the match can still technically happen, but in my mind, it should be safe for SummerSlam. Maybe some bigger plan for SummerSlam. Who knows? Anyway, speaking of something big, tonight they announced that again we would have a former SmackDown GM show up. The running gag that's been going on. Because we've seen almost everybody. We saw John Laurinaitis. We saw Corporate Kane twice. We've seen Teddy Long. Who's left? Fourth of July. You know, the perfect way for former SmackDown GM to return home to WWE at long last after a lot of rumors about him returning. But, our thoughts of that were spoiled by two words. Excuse me! Vicky Guerrero. Now, the way Vicky coming out is the gag. Because we knew at some point we're going to see Vicky Guerrero come in this gag of former SmackDown GMs. And she's still one of the most hated characters in all of WWE history. She just screams those two words and gets her ass booed out the building. You think Roman Reigns gets his ass booed a lot? When Vicky was in her prime, when everyone hated her the most, she got as much booed as Roman does now. You know what I mean? But. Of all the times for Vicky to show up, bad to show up on the 4th of July wall when we would have wanted, Kurt Angle to show up! But if Angle does return, he should not just return as part of a gag. He needs something important. But it would be nice to see Angle show up on the 4th of July wall. But it was still nice to see Vicky too. Vicky, no offense to you, but we want an angle. It's true, it's true. <laughs> or I should say, it's damn true. At some point, angle does need to come home. So, uh, there you go. Now, on to our next scenario with the team of Breeze. I'm going to anxiety if you have around. We have the Vol Villains taking on Golden Truth. We knew at some point Vol Villains would be kind of cool to find jobbers because we they got the tag team title shot. Everyone was like, well, when they got the feud of New Day after Enzo's injury at Bayback, involving the challenge New Day, like I said, it was the only time we are going to see Vaughn Bills get a wheel push before they get demoted. And that's kind of like what happened here. Zilly Squash from the Golden Troop, even with the single all lyrics now, they did it once on SmackDown, but never did it again. But now the single all lyrics are back. You expect people to sing along to that? Hell, Fondango's theme has no words, but we sing along to that. Da -da, da -da 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 -da. I don't have one, one good arm, but still. Still doing the Fondango. So, Blink and Miss Victory for Golden Truth. Apparently, the feud with Bizango continues. Uh, didn't they already beat him after losing to him twice? This is a fear that never ends. It will go on and on, my friend. And speaking of few that may go on and on, but I won't get sick and tired of this feud continuing. John Cena in the club. Even Cena said the crowd ain't wild up. The crowd at Columbus looked decent. And Cena was like, you're not too fired up tonight. You must be disappointed. Uh, they were because Kurt Angle didn't show up. Anywho, he addressed the club and being beat down by the club every week. Especially after the club got involved in Cena's match against AJ Styles and Money in the Bank. Kind of spoiling it. So I liked the AJ one, but said it had to be a screwy ending. I kind of talked about it in my Money Bank review, but if Cena can get Owens over clean or Daniel Bryan over clean, why couldn't he get AJ over clean? So that led to AJ and the club coming out to a good promo. Kind of a silly promo, but it was still a fun promo. So about, doesn't matter, Cena, we're going to beat you up. And you have no help. Notice that? No one's helped Cena doing these beatdown segments. Like, Halloween's coming up. What are you going to do? Gallows. Dress up like Bushwhacker Luke. And beat John Cena up. But that's the 4th of July. Let's not focus on the future. 
4th of July, big deal for America. What do you like to do, guys? Beat up John Cena! So they attempted to beat down John Cena like they did. The beat down was on until he got help. So I knew at some point they're going to have a six man tag with Cena and a team against the club to save AJ and Cena one on one encounter for SummerSlam. Who would it be? A team I kind of mentioned earlier, they've been floundering ever since being out of the tag picture. They're so over, and they need something to do. Well, they decided to give Enzo and Cass the opportunity to team up with John Cena. Well, at least they will get a rub from Cena instead of getting buried, like Cena's done in so many others. But it is interesting to see Enzo and Cass against the club with Cena. Guess we've seen us talk about the new era and that all the new era people must go through me. Well, new era people's like, you can't beat them. Join them. Join John Cena. Join Super Cena against the club. And that match was made for Battleground. Cena and Enzo and Cass, who were also shilling the Bada Boom box from Sonic. It's got a weird bottom payment, but at least, hey, Enzo and Cass are the best with it. They have to go with Cena against the club. I'm glad it's a six man. Because I'm glad they're saving Cena and AJ for SummerSlam. At least they're saving some matches for SummerSlam. Unlike the main event that should be at SummerSlam, but they're wasting it at Battleground. Even if one guy's suspending. Talk about that already in detail just a few moments ago. So there you go. And speaking of matches made for Battleground, I think we should know this one was going to be made. Becky Lynch against Natalia was made. Following the at the actions of Natalia and Miami Bank turning on Becky Lynch, I heard Becky Lynch was going to turn heel. But I made Natalia instead. They had a beat down on Raw right before Becky scheduled matchup against Summer Rae. So the match finally happened tonight on Raw. It was an okay match, but it was kind of spoiled by a botch from Summer Rae. Nasty one at that. She was trying to go for like a vertical suplex on Becky, but she botched the landing. And had Becky land really hard on her neck. Nasty landing. But Becky shook it off. And came back with some big moves. Including the back splatter. Leading up to the. This all ran the victory for Becky Lynch. From a medal on her side. Heading towards a match against Italia. Who was watching from the back. Short match went ahead. And got some Divas action on TV. Because we had a Divas segment. A women's segment. Between. Shaw and Sasha, and we had a women's match between Becky and Summer. So there you go. On with the next segment, we saw early in the evening a video from the Wyatt family. It was a creepy promo. Inviting New Day to their compound, continuing their feud with New Day, they'll uh, probably get on at Battleground. So New Day came out with their fun and games. And they were interrupted by the Wyatts. Who once again said, come to our world. Come to our compound. Another little creepy promo. And Xavier, who's been who's been shaking up at when the Wyatts show up. You know, every time the Wyatts show up, Xavier doesn't say anything. He's just scared stiff. Xavier finally spoke up. At the Big Game Kofi accepted the challenge. From Bray Wyatt. Xavier's like, guys. He's trying to be like the voice of reason. Now you may not kind of know why Xavier's been scared. Stiff. Like people are like, and even I've been like, are they going to break up New Days? Xavier on the Wyatt side. Who knows the story? But Xavier's like, guys. If you're playing fun and games, we got to realize Wyatt is a danger. He's a dangerous man. His, his family's a dangerous team. They can knock people out just like that. But if you guys are going to make fun and games and accept Wyatt's challenge with a smile and a wink and no seriousness, then New Day is no more. And he walked out with Francesca left on the wing. And Big Game Kofi bewildered by Xavier's speech. So we'll see how far they go with this scenario. You know, what is Xavier going to do? Is he going to turn on New Day? Is it going to be a joke or a setup? I think it's what a lot of people don't want. This whole New Day thing with Xavier being the voice of reason, being the scared one, and telling the other guys not to accept the challenge because it's dangerous. Don't let it be like a fucking joke. 
Don't let it be like a prank you would see on an episode of WWE Swerved. Cheap plug. Season 2 is awesome. Better than Season 1. I'll lay it out there. Anywho. See how this area goes with Xavier. So on to our main event. A 16-man tag team affair, which I knew had predictability kind of all over it. We have Team USA, who kind of like jobbers these days, but hey, they're still good guys. Big Show, Jack Swagger, Ella Cruz, Mark Henry, Zack Ryder, the Dudleys, and Kane. Teaming up against the International Alliance, they call themselves. Chris Jericho, the Lucha Dragons, Kalisa and Sin Cara, Cesaro, K.O., Sami Zayn, Abel de Rio, and Shimus. Who all came out with their anthems? America didn't come out to the anthem. They came out to another song. I don't know the name of it, but I know like the beat. And it got down from an 8-man, a 16-man, to a 14-man quickly with quick eliminations of Senkar and Baba Dudley. It was kind of a cluster of a match. There were some good little spots, including Zazar and Jack Swagger getting it on and recapturing their glory as former partners when they were the real Americans. Mark Henry got in and got a sexual chocolate chain. But we knew with the Team America was going to be a united force. Team, when we found out who was on the Team International Alliance, we knew there was going to be some tensions, especially some rivalries with Sheamus and Del Rio hating each other, although they rivalry did not get exploited. But the rivalry between K.O. and Zayn got exploited. As K.O. at one point got DQ'd by hitting Sami Zayn, his own guy with a chair. Then K.O. got DQ'd by nearly Owens with a chair, who was already eliminated. That was kind of like, screwy. And it was a decent matchup. Where Paco was getting some good shots out too, he got eliminated. And when it came down to the last couple people, when America got down to two people, which was Zack Ryder and Big Show, it was the final four on the other side was Jericho, Del Rio, Sheamus, and uh, Cesaro. Cesaro's like the odd man out. Not getting tagged in. But he tagged himself in. And then all hell broke loose. All the guys attacked each other. I think Del Rio was attacking people. That's when Zazar when got himself in. He started beating everybody up on his, on his own team. Knocking out Jericho, the way on Sheamus, leading to the uppercut train. But then he got eliminated eventually. Then Jericho got eliminated. And then Del Rio got eliminated, leaving. Sheamus the only one. Like I said, he and Del Rio's feud didn't get exploited. But he was the only one left on Team No USA. Taking on Big Show and Zack Ryder. Kind of an easy win for Team USA, but I'm happy Zack Ryder got the pin in this. And the Big Show got a choke slam attempt on Sheamus. Ryder coming with the Wolf Ryder in the 1 2 3 victory for Team USA, and I'm happy Ryder, like I said, got the pin. He's been through a lot of shit the last couple of years, especially the last couple of months. He got his WrestleMania moment, winning the IC Championship and only having it for a day, losing the Miz. Being lost in a shuffle since. But it was cool to see him get a big win on Raw on the 4th of July. So it was cool for Wyatt to get the pin. It's kind of like WWE's way of saying, Sorry, we had you only be a champion for a day, Wyatt. You get the victory on the 4th of July Raw for Team USA. God bless you, Wyatt. And God bless America. America! So there you go. America's birthday. Edition of My Night Raw is a decent one. Because Raw next week will be from Detroit. Um, there will not be a wall review next week. I'm saying that right now. There will not be a wall review next week for me. Um, I will be at a concert. I'm not going to wall in Detroit. Um, they didn't announce it when I was at wall in February, which is awesome. But I don't want Survivor Series to come here. But they're not. They're bringing it to Toronto, from what I'm hearing. So, they're probably going to announce it this weekend officially. Because I think they're doing a house show in Toronto. This weekend, so they're going to probably officially announce the virus season in Toronto this weekend. When they announce their comeback to Toronto after 
this weekend's house show. In Detroit, we're going to do some holiday house show like they always do. So there you go. No more review next week. But it will be one review on the 18th. So there you go. See you on two weeks for another one review. With that in mind, you can attack. Bye, the review from Zach. Thank you so much. Hope you had a happy and safe 4th of July, Independence Day. See y'all later. Too sweet to you. Booyah.